Uh, yeah, I will be presenting work on PPO Plus, which is joint work with Jurgen Trulis and Alois Rosset. Let's start with some very um, general idea, which is just replacement in unknown context. So not fixing any particular formalism, but just thinking about the concept. What we like to do is uh, be able to replace an occurrence, let's say a, a triangle shaped graph is depicted by a square. Um, and when you do this in any context as the big below here, um, you will have edges incident to your pattern that may be even completely on the pattern, but not part of it. Uh, and so the question always is, um, is your rule application applicable in, in such a context? And if so, how should you, these incident edges be transformed? Now, if you take two frameworks like DPO and SPO, they decide this question on the level of the framework. So SPO will allow you to always proceed with the replacement. Whereas DPO um, is more restrictive, it won't delete edges. You have to make sure that the points of contact are in your interface. And so what we were interested in already last year was to have a formalism that um, allows you to address this on the level of the rules. So we introduced patch graph rewriting at uh, PTR, um, it's, it's the shorthand at ICGT. And the idea is, if you look at the rules, we can use these kinds of annotations, which you can think of as variables X, Y, Z, which um, represent permissible sets of edges of any label. Uh, and the, the variable Y, for instance, in particular, represents edges coming from the context and into this particular node. So by using these annotations in the left-hand side, um, we can also exclude certain edges. For instance, we are not allowed to have a loop on top of this node over here because we don't have a variable that could capture it. And then the idea is that in the right-hand side, you can reuse these variable names. Um, you can delete, for instance, the Z is deleted. Uh, the X and Y are duplicated. And as you can see, when we duplicate the Y, the incidence to the context is just uh, preserved from the left. Now, when we introduced this last year, um, yeah, we had a set theoretic approach and with a very visual semantics. And for this year, we wanted to have an algebraic rather than a set theoretic approach. And the resulting formalism is called PPPO plus. And it's called PPPO plus because um, while well, we found out that pullback push out by Corradini and his colleagues almost uh, suited our needs, um, but we found it necessary to, to strengthen the matching mechanism. So PPO plus is really just PPO, but with a stronger um, magic matching uh, mechanism. And let me just note that it doesn't completely subsume PGR, but it captures all the things that we actually wanted to express. Um, but I will not go into further details on that in this talk. Uh, instead, I will discuss the notion of PPO plus rule and step. I will relate in detail um, PPO and PPO plus. Um, and um, I will show how using PPO plus and a category that we've newly introduced called graph less equal, you can uh, actually relabel graphs in a way that we think is uh, quite easy to define. So let's start with the notion of a PPO plus rule. Uh, let's say we have a, um, I mean, we have a, a span at the top, just like in DPO, LKR, and the left-hand side L will be replaced by R, K is the interface. But now on the top, uh, sorry, on the bottom, we also have two type graphs, L prime and K prime. And the idea is that they, um, yeah, they uh, describe sort of permissible environments around these patterns. So if you look at L prime, the grayed out parts are the ones that are not in the image of the type morphism TL. And in this example, let me explain a little bit the notation that we use. Um, for instance, this node is labeled with the name X1 and it will map into the node which uh, contains its name. So it will map into the node X1, X2. This is the convention throughout the uh, talk. Um, then we have in this uh, rule, we have a morphism L from K prime to L prime. 
And the idea is that with this, you can model deletion of uh, edges and also of these edges that are not uh, in the image of L. Uh, we can also do duplication, so we can have nonlinear rules. And when we do the pullback, we restrict these operations to the, to the pattern part. And then for morphism R, we can merge again, as we do here. We can add additional elements, such as this U and this edge over here. And if we construct a pushout, you can get a schematic picture of the of the rewrite rule by comparing just L prime and R prime. And this will also be clearer when we consider an example in a little bit. Um, so the main point in which uh, PPO plus differs from PPO, and I would say the only essential point is the matching mechanism. Um, what we try to do is for host graph G, we try to sandwich it in between the graphs L and L prime. So we try to find an occurrence of L in G through morphism M, which is monic. And then uh, we want G to be an instance of L prime, which is the morphism uh, alpha, which witnesses this. And then moreover, for the strongness, we require that the pullback of alpha along TL gives back L. And the idea is then that we don't just have commutation, but if you look at this example, this is sort of the context part of the host graph. Strong matching uh, expresses that you're not allowed to collapse this context onto parts of the pattern. Um, so if you contrast this with commutation, which is the condition for PVPO, uh, you're in principle allowed, uh, especially since this is a terminal subgraph, you could map all of G onto this uh, pattern part over here. Uh, and as I will show with examples later, especially when matching is non-deterministic, we think strong matching is a useful restriction. Uh, if, you are, if you are in control of the matching, then uh, commutation is just fine and could even be convenient in some cases. But okay, let's see then what is a, a PPO rewrite step. In the top left, I depict the rule. And in the bottom, I will build up an example. First, we lay out the morphisms as shown here. Note that we use the morphism L prime. Um, that has the imported data, not so much the morphism L. And then for a host graph, we try to establish a strong match, um, which is the case here. We have commutation, the pattern is preserved, and this context parts are not collapsed into the pattern. Then for this bottom co-span, um, we construct a pullback to model the effect of L prime on our host graph. Uh, so some of these edges, the ones from Y to the context uh, are deleted. And uh, we do this duplication operation. And then finally, we'd like, we would like to do a push out um, on a span from K to GK um, and from K to R. And it, so for this, we need a morphism. And for PVO plus, we have the result that um, there always exists a unique mono U such that U and then U prime uh, commutes with or equals the mono TK. So we single out that particular morphism to do the pushout on. And then when we compute the pushout, uh, yeah, we model the merging. And um, if, you, if you squint your eyes a bit of the isomorphism, you can see, for instance, that these edges over here, these two edges, they were on the pattern incident to it, but not part of it. And uh, effectively we've swapped them around. So the idea is that for the incident edges, the endpoints that are on your pattern, you can rearrange them as you, as you please. And um, yeah, so we have three squares. One is for strong matching. One is for the filtering and duplication. And, one, and the push out is for merging and adding elements. So they all have a dedicated function. So let's explain a bit how the two formalisms relate, because like I said, we built very much on a PPO. Um, so PPO rules depicted in the bottom and the PPO plus rule uh, in the top. So in a PPO rule, we have two squares. Well, if we compute our push out, we also have two squares. Um, in principle, PPO rules can be just commuting squares, but already in their paper uh, of Corodini and his colleagues, 
they define a canonical PPR rule as a, a rule, which is first the pullback and then a push out. Uh, so then the only remaining difference is that we require TL to be monic. Um, so we could say that the PPR plus rule is a monic uh, canonical PPO rule, uh, where this push out is not included in the definition, but of course you can construct it. And then these are the rewrite step diagrams. Um, as you can see, they look a bit different, but that's because we, uh, we went for a different layout. If I show you these two squares in the PPO plus diagram, you see more clearly that the PPO plus step defines a PPO step, but so we have the strong match uh, square. And the, the uniqueness of this morphism that establishes the commutation uh, doesn't hold for PPO, so you have to define the U for uh, universal properties of pullbacks. Um, which you prefer is, I guess, a matter of preference. What we like about this rendering is that uh, it has sort of the minimal information. You can read it more easily from left to right, and each square has the, the dedicated function. But um, it, it defines a PPO plus real step diagram. OK, so why would you intuitively want to use strong matching? Um, first example is loop removal, so we will try to find just an isolated node with a single loop disconnected from the rest of the context. So here is a, a, a host graph that has a strong match. And then we just delete the loop on this occurrence that we found. And the rest we, we leave intact. So we do the pullback, the push out, and this is the result. Now, if you have non-deterministic matching, you just generate the real relation. Um, like I said, this graph could map onto this pattern part over here. And then when you delete the edge, you actually end up deleting all the edges in the graph. So that's something you might not uh, want. Uh, second example relates to cloning. So in PPO plus, um, in L prime here, we don't have any additional elements along the pattern. So we know that the only instance can actually be a graph that's isomorphic to it. And now when we perform cloning, we will clone the X uh, and the edge towards the, o, towards the Y. Um, we end up with uh, just this sequence of graphs. Um, and as you can see, we perform the merge. We do first do a clone and then we perform a merge where we end up with a loop here on, the, on this node. Now in PPO, since you're allowed to collapse on the pattern, uh, we have this, uh, this occurrence here. We map it into L prime, but now also this string of nodes that comes out of the, the pattern part, we can wind over the graph in the L prime in principle with non-deterministic matching. And then when we clone, we also clone those X nodes and the arrows into any Y nodes. And now when we do the push out, this uh, morphism from K to GK actually only targets this uh, upper part. And so the merge uh, effect will actually only um, affect the part that was singled out with uh, as the pattern intuitively. And so this has a kind of as uh, asymmetry, which we found personally a bit unintuitive. And so we, see, we think this is also good to be able to rule out. So what about expressiveness? Because we restrict the rewrite relation um, and any, any PPO plus rule is definitely a PPO rule and any PPO plus step is a PPO step. And the converse statements do not hold because PPO can have quite global effects that PPO may not have. But we have this result in the paper that in suitable categories for any PPO rule, uh, you can find a, a set of PPO plus rule that collectively model um, the generated rewrite relation of, uh, of the PPO rule. And moreover, if this PPO rule is monic, then you can find a, a single rule that does that. So this is a bit similar to the result for uh, DPO, I think, that um, using monic matching, you can actually express more expressive gen grammars despite having a smaller rewrite relation. Uh, and as previous examples show, uh, yeah, the converse uh, does not hold because of these potentially global effects that you cannot control in, in the non-deterministic setting. And let me just say that the suitable categories include locally small 
topuses such as graph, um, but we have the precise conditions in um, the paper. Now, there is one uh, sort of orthogonal issue, but it relates to what I discussed in the beginning. Conceptually, we wanted to have some sort of notion of wildcard. So in the type graph L, to be able to specify that we want to allow additional edges alongside this edge A, for instance. Um, and in graph, this is cumbersome because you would have to enumerate all the labels in the alphabet because morphisms preserve labels. So our idea was to relax the equality to less equal. Uh, and then to introduce a top element, then um, so the, the edges with C and B map into the red edge with top over here. And then uh, pushouts are still defined. You get the same graph as in graph, but you compute the, the join on the, on the labels. For symmetry, we thought of introducing a bottom element as well. So now you can think of pattern L as specifying that Alongside this A edge, there should also be an additional edge, but we do not care about its particular label. Um, and also pullbacks are defined. It's just like in graph, but now you take the meat uh, on the labels. Then you can generalize this idea to uh, complete, uh, complete lattices. So we can have a kind of type hierarchy as depicted here. Um, this this uh, edge, for instance, will only allow, uh, well, both, but also any um, edges labeled with numbers to be mapped into it. And then our contribution is, um, yeah, part of this paper that we introduce graph with these less equal morphisms where the labels form a complete lattice. And note that this category is not adhesive. Um, this square over here is a push out along a mono because the, uh, the join or the supremum of top is top, but it's not a pullback um, because the meat would have to be a top as well, but it's pulled over here. But for us, this is not a problem because PPO plus does not require um, adhesivity. So how can we use this to relabel as I've announced? Let's assume we have some flat lattice over here as depicted. Um, then the rule below will hard override an arbitrary node in an arbitrary context with an arbitrary label, it will override the label with label C. So um, the type, the, the label bounds are range from bot to top. And if you look in L prime, any context around it is allowed. So this is an example host graph. Then when we do the pullback here, um, the meat of A and bot is bot, and the meat of B and top is B. So we get this graph. So intuitively, you can think of the bot in K prime as um, an instruction to forget a label and the top as an instruction to preserve a label. And now when we compute the push out, the join of C and bot is uh, C. So we end up with the rule that we wanted to express. And I chose this example because this is one that we, um, it, for DPO, there's a sequence of papers that try to address relabeling. And the common challenge there seems to be dealing with the push-out complement, so ensuring that it's still uh, uniquely defined. Um, and in the solutions we found, this idea of hard overwriting um, didn't seem expressible. Um, yeah, and here we can express it. What else can we do with this category in PVO plus? We can express some sort of notion of variable like in term rewriting. So here's a term rewriting rule at the top. And at the bottom is an encoding in PVO plus, which simulates it. Um, so we use sort of sync nodes labeled with top to capture subterms. And in K prime, we can duplicate and throw away terms. Um, and if you're interested in this, I suggest you look at the paper at GCM, because there we show that uh, linear term rewriting can be uh, encoded into PVO plus rewriting with preservation of termination. So there's a paper dedicated to that. Um, yeah, so to conclude, uh, PPO plus, uh, we require really only um, pullbacks and pushouts along monomorphisms. So it's weaker than adhesivity. Uh, and I saw some earlier talks, for instance, by Nicolas, um, where he also had some examples of where adhesivity was too strong. And I hope that graph less equal is 
one other category that uh, can be considered interesting uh, to be used for rewriting. And what we personally also like, and already about PPO Plus as it was introduced, sorry, PPO as it was introduced by Corradini's colleagues, is that it really requires only an understanding of pullbacks and pushouts, uh, no more complex notions. Now, it was already known, um, for instance, if you look at the PPO paper by Corradini and his colleagues, that um, we have this simulation hierarchy. So, simulation means that uh, F is simulated by G. If for any F rule, you can find the G rule that uh, contains the rewrite relation. Um, this is known for, for monic matching using some mild restrictions for, for DPO and SPO. Um, but like I showed you, uh, if you're inter interested in modeling, so instead of uh, containment, getting the exact same rewrite relation, then the situation is different. And we conjecture, uh, we could not go into detail in the paper, but that in graphing with monic matching, we obtain this kind of structure. So if this is true, then PPO plus can be viewed as a nice unification of, of these formalisms. Um, yeah, and finally, the relabeling, I'm interested to see how many applications there are of that. Um, it seems quite, quite powerful and complication free, and we don't have this difficulty um, relating to questions with the, the push out complement that is uh, usually a challenge with with dpo so um yeah thanks for listening and I'm, i'd be happy to take questions